How's it going guys? My name is the Freaky Kid. Welcome back to the channel and a different kind of video on the channel that I've been really, been really, really been like really, really been wanting to do for quite a while. I'm doing a Pokemon challenge video, although admittedly it, it's not that much of a challenge because I'm using the most overpowered, most broken Pokemon in all of Pokemon history. Not Mega Rayquaza, it's Generation 1 Mewtwo in Pokemon Yellow. So, how's this gonna go? Are we gonna win? Are we gonna have a couple of hiccups and then win? Or are we just gonna get absolutely pounded into mince me? <laughs> if you do go and you enjoy the video though, make sure you leave a like, comment down below whether we are going to do good or not, and make sure you subscribe to the helps me out a lot. Let's so, you guys want to I more start off the game but and let's we get have into a video, computer on the screen for some random reason. I name myself Bronson as per usual, and I name my rival Daniel as per usual. We go into the game and we are in our bedroom in Pallet Town. And within seconds, I witness the Pokemon Professor of the Kanto region catch a wild engineered scientific beast with a Pokeball on the first ball. That don't make no sense. I stop Professor Oak rambling and Daniel pushes me out of the way to get a Eevee. However, I get the Mewtwo. And I name it Mew 3 because it is that powerful in Generation 1. And look at those stats at level 5, like, come on. And our rival challenges us to a battle with this Eevee. We go for a Psychic because that is in the Gen 1 moveset at level 1, yet we don't actually KO it somehow, to my surprise. Yet he's complaining that he picked the wrong Pokemon. So we go into the gym and Brock is absolutely trivialized. Geodude and Onyx both take one hit and are both down, and we get the Boulder Badge. Straight away though, we go straight over to Misty with a time of 35 minutes. We battle the gym trainers in there and they don't provide us any more of a challenge. Horsey goes down in two confusions, and Shelter also. Golden goes down in two, and Misty takes us on with her Staryu and Star Me. Staryu takes two hits, I think? Yes, it does. It takes two hits. And Stami is actually a lot more of a challenge because I decided to try and swift it. However, it used X Defend and Harden. And then he decided to Bubble Beam us. We would have been dead to crit there. But we get the second Gym Badge. We go straight up to Nugget Bridge and the rival fight is on. Spearow goes down in two hits. The Sentry goes down in one Psychic. Rattata goes down in a Confusion. And Eevee goes down to one Psychic. And that is Rival 3. And we go straight to Rival 4, and as you can see, he could not stand in our way whatsoever. We go straight to the gym, and I decide to teach Dig to Diglet, Dig Cut, and I throw away the Moonstone, which, if I'd have caught an Eaterino in uh, the Safari Zone, would have been handy. But I teach Bubble Beam 2, Mew 3 as well, and I decide to battle the gym trader so I can get an extra level. So we go wandering around aimlessly at in the trash. And we get the Trash Switch. So we go take on Surge with his level 28 Raichu, and it is a pretty simple fight, honestly. It took us, I think, two hits. And yeah, two hits, easier as you like. And we get the TM for Thunderbolt, which we instantly teach to Mew 3 over Swift. Because special, am I right? I go up to the top of the Celadon department store and collect at least one of every single drink. So we can give them to this girl and get the TMs for Rock Slide, Tri Attack, and Ice Beam. Only Tri Attack and Ice Beam could be taught to Mewtwo though, but it's okay. We use Cut to go get the Hitchin for Fly and teach it to Pidgey. We also go straight back down to the Celadon Gym where Erica. Well, I'm pretty sure you can tell how she goes. She uses Grass Poison types. Pretty, pretty damn simple, really. Tangler goes down to two Ice Beams, whereas her other two Pokemon go down to a single Psychic. As witnessed right here, boom and boom. As easy as you like, and we have the Gym Badge. We now go back up the top of the Celadon Apartment Store and collect the Poké Doll, so we don't have to fight Giovanni and do the entire Rocket Hideout. This way, we can skip that part of the game. But we have a rival fight first, and in red and blue, this fight is very, very hard, considering he actually has a lot of evolved Pokemon. However, in this, the only evolved Pokemon is the Spearow into Fearow, which is, in a way, unfortunate, but it makes this fight so damn easy. 
and he goes down just like that. We go up to the top and we get to the Marowak fight. As you can see, this is how you do the Pokedoll, which for exploit, if you didn't know already, you use a Pokedoll as soon as the Marowak fight starts and it literally just runs away from you. I then take on Jesse and James with Rillabies and they go down like it's nobody's business and Mr. Fuji takes me down to the bottom of the foot of the Pokemon Tower. And we get the Pokefruit, which we use on this Snorlax. And I tried to catch it because Snorlax can only surf its strength. However, because I am such a big brain, I forget that Mewtwo has like a 30% crit rate, and I do this. Just, just watch. <sighs> Boop. I went for the Psychic though, just so I could get the extra stab damage to leave it in, say, red health. However, it died, because it was a crit. I quit yeeting around this fire zone, and I get the gold teeth, which we can trade with the Warden for the HM4 strength. I then go into the Warden's uh, Safari House. Secret House, whatever it's called, I can't remember. And we get the HM03, I run around in circles, we go to Kogo, we take him on with his Venonats and Venomoth, for some reason he has Moss Fetish. Uh, I don't know why, don't ask me why. <laughs> but we go straight up to Silphco and Rival Fival, the very, very hard Rival Fighter Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow is upon us. And he goes down relatively easy in the end. <clears throat> You'll see later on that it doesn't go as easy as that every single time. But he goes down very, very easily in the end, and we can go straight on to fight Jesse and James and Giovanni. Jesse and James go down like it's nobody's business, likewise with Giovanni. However, this fight I thought would have been a lot harder than it was, because I forget how freaking stupid the AI in these games is. Just easy as you like. It doesn't help that I'm using the strongest Pokemon in the game at all, but we go straight to Sabrina next. And this battle is probably one of the harder ones in the entire run, as she also uses Psychic types. The strength is a physical move, but it only does so much. It can't even one-shot Kadabra, and it hits us with a Kinesis, which is very, very nasty. And we also get a special drop twice! Ac we are minus two accuracy. Alakazam uses Reflect, an X Defend, and a Reflect again. It doesn't matter, we get a crit, we get a win thanks to stupid AI. If she was big brain, we would have lost. I pick up the secret key from the Cinnabar Mansion, and we go into the Cinnabar Pokemon Gym, which, as you can see, is not your average Pokemon Gym. If you have not played a Generation 1 or Generation 3, Fire Red Leaf Green or Red Blue Yellow Green, you don't know that this gym actually is a sort of quiz. If you get the question right, you don't have to battle a trainer. But, HA! YOU BETTER HAVE BURN HEEL! He says. As we absolutely yeet it through him. As much as I'd love fire types, Gen 1 fire types, at least in Gen 1, were absolutely horrendous. Arcanine was the best, almost, but Flareon was even better, which is sort of why I'm not keen on our rival having a Flareon. We have Fire Blast off him though, and we go straight into Giovanni's gym. As you can see, we take out the Black Belt dude and the Tamer dude. Uh, for some reason, we do that very easily, and for some reason I had to clip in there twice. We don't worry about that. And we take on Giovanni one last time for the Earth Badge. And he leads off with a Dugtrio, which is easy with one Blizzard. Persian goes down to a single... A single? Two Thunderbolts. Nido Queen goes down to a single Psychic, likewise with Nido King. And Rhydon goes down to a single Blizzard. When the final rival fight before the Pokemon League, this was pretty damn tasty of a fight, to be honest with you. Because, like, look at this. Just... Ooh, the crits are everywhere. It, it's like, ooh, that damage is huge. We get a one shot on the cadaver with a strength though, and Flareon goes down pretty damn easily, but with that, not without a scare, as he gets a crit on us, as we get a crit on it. We go through the badge gates, and we go through Victory Road with absolutely no trouble whatsoever. I left the sound on. <laughs> it's okay. We take one last look at our new best friend, Mew3, and look at those stats. This thing is an absolute monster. We go into the Pokemon League, and Lorelei is the first hurdle that we have us to climb over. She leads over the Dugong, which goes down to two, not one, but two Thunderbolts. She then goes into Cloyster, which does go down to a single Thunderbolt. Then Slowbro comes out, and Slowbro takes two hits by the skin of its teeth. Jinx now comes out and goes down to two strengths, and then out comes Lapras, which you'd think would take two, but a crit comes through and gets us the one shot and level 51. And we give a quick heal up to Mewtwo, and Bruno is next. Now, Bruno 
could have been done in like five different ways. I decided this was pretty much the right way because I do this every single time. Uh, I psychic every single Pokemon. Pretty much. However, after this, I did, I will admit, as you will find out, I did lose to the Elite Four at some stage. I ended up using Thunderbolt on the Fighting Types and Blizzard on the Onyx. As you can see here, we are running through again, I think. No, this is the same run. I've done a boo-boo here. I apologize. But here is the Agatha fight in all of its glory. Gobek goes down to a single Thunderbolt. Psychic hits up the Haunter. Arbok goes down to a single Psychic. Gengar goes down to a single Psychic. And with as much ease, it's not a single Psychic, but it's two. We are through to Lance. As we heal up one more time, we go through to Lance. And this fight actually ended me twice. I was on my fourth run through the Elite Four when I actually finished this. So Thunderbolt takes out the Gyarados in one hit, no matter what you do. Dragonair goes down to a single Psychic at a higher level, but at this stage it doesn't. So I have to Blizzard both the Dragonairs, I Thunderbolt the Aerodactyl, and I actually get the KO so not surprisingly. And then I Blizzard the Dragonite with hopes of hitting it once and KOing it so I could have a Blizzard left for the Exeggutor, and I don't. So I decide right here to teach Fire Blast over Blizzard, just so I could have the extra PP. However, what I didn't compensate for was the minus 5% accuracy on it. So we are here at the rival on the first run through the Elite Four. He leads off with the Sand Slash, we lead off with obviously move 3, and because we don't have Blizzard, we actually cannot one-shot the Sand Slash, so we get hit with a heavy damaging Earthquake. Then he goes to the Alakazam, which goes down to two, yes, not one, but two strengths. Exeggutron now comes out and we miss a Fire Blast. We hit it with the second one and it does only about three quarters and it hits us with a Leech Seed which proves fatal. As we go for another Fire Blast and we get a crit on the Magneton, we do not KO and unfortunately for us we get paralyzed, meaning that we cannot outspeed the Cloister. So we use Thunderbolt and it gets left with a sliver of HP. It Ice Beams and unfortunately because of that we can't do enough damage and we get Quick Attack by Flareon. However on this second run through as this is the successful run. We Fire Blast the Sand Slash. We Strength the Alakazam three times because he uses a full restore. For some reason he didn't before. But we get level 65. Exeggutor goes down to a single Fire Blast after we miss. I think, no, he, he actually gets a three seed. Okay. <laughs> Magneton comes out now and it goes down in a single Psychic. Thunderbolt takes out the Cloister. And finally, we get to the Flareon with good enough PP and accuracy, still all intact and enough HP that we can take it out in two hits. And that is how you solo run the entirety of Pokemon Yellow with a Mewtwo. And with a time of 10 hours, 35 minutes, I'm not exactly ashamed of that. But I would also like to say to you guys, thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed making this video. It took quite a lot of effort at the end of the day, but it was really, really fun to make. And if you do want to see more of these, make sure to comment down below and subscribe for more content just like this. I do want to make these videos. These are very, very, very fun to make. Please subscribe. Thank you. And hit the notification bell for more content just like this whenever it comes out. But until next time, guys, I'll see you guys later. Peace.